Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildry Garden. And in this video, we are going to be talking about my top six plants for a shady border. Now stick around because I will be going through them individually and giving you some top tips because I promise you these six plants will absolutely benefit the wildlife and maximize the biodiversity in your garden. Now I should say guys, obviously these are British native wildflowers. This does um, mean that they are very good in the UK and also across Europe and some of them into the States depending on where you are but obviously different plants will vary depending on different locations of course and what zone you're in and all the rest of it but these are some of my favorites for use pretty much broadly across the UK the British Isles because they are so good from my experience from what I've seen for attracting so much wildlife to your garden so before we continue, I should just say a couple of quick things, guys. Firstly, my good friend, David Crossley, I've got a message from him. If you haven't seen his channel, please do check it out. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I did an interview on his wildlife garden that he has been making for 37, probably 38 years now. And he's an incredible man and I'm absolutely chuffed to have him as a friend. But unfortunately, David's computer has broken. So if you've been watching any of David's wildlife garden videos, over the last few months unfortunately he's kind of temporarily on hold while he gets his computer rebuilt but do subscribe to his channel anyway and check out some of the previous videos they're absolutely brilliant i don't know how he's not a full-time filmmaker for a <laughs> professional company he's absolutely brilliant so yes do check out david's channel and i should also say guys that the uh, channel now has a new feature so any of you that enjoy the channel and learn lots of fun facts for you to help you create more uh, habitats for wildlife in your own garden then we now have a new thanks button just underneath every video so you can scroll across where you've got like comment um, and all the rest of it if you scroll across the thanks there's no obligation obviously but feel free if you want to donate anything my way even if it's just a pound which helps buy for all the editing pay for all the editing software and all the costs for running this channel which are a surprising amount these days but anyway just thought i'd get that out there let you guys know uh, there will be some new changes coming up to the channel in a little while i won't reveal too much but there will be some additions and hopefully some bonus content for you guys so yes more on that to come in a future video but let's get cracking with today's video and look at the top six plants you can put in your garden to attract wildlife for a shady spot so my first pick as a holly blue is just alighting the top of my marsh marigold. Typically, while I'm trying to film this video, <laughs> holly blue, by the way, I got, uh, I filmed, or I photographed laying eggs on this holly behind me yesterday. So absolutely chuffed to bits, along with uh, my first female orange tip in the garden as well, laying eggs on the garlic mustard. So, oh, why not? Let's start. Garlic mustard, number one. <laughs> Get some in your garden, guys. Garlic mustard is one of my absolute favorite plants. It's just incredible. And unfortunately, for Nikki, probably more so than myself, the majority of the area around the pond has now become a bit of a garlic mustard bed. So uh, yes, I'm thrilled. The orange tips are thrilled. Nikki slightly less so, but I think she's warming towards it given that the amount of insects that are now visiting these flowers is absolutely incredible. Garlic mustard, I should say, guys, is a biennial. So that means it will send up its sort of basal rosette, a few leaves to begin with while it establishes its roots for the first year and then it will flower in the second year like some of our other native wildflowers. So it's a bit of a shame when you see it come up and you feel you have to wait uh, for a whole year, but trust me, it's very, very good. Um, and it's a great plant for many, many reasons. Now, I've already mentioned it's great for nectar. So, so many insects will visit the garlic mustard to nectar on this plant. It really is a vital food source for many, many insects. That's moths, bees, butterflies. There's loads that will use it. Um, but as I've already just touched on it very slightly, um, the orange tip, my favorite butterfly, will of course lay its eggs on the plant. And if you go out into your garden and you've got some garlic mustard, in your garden at this time of year. If you just look very carefully on the underside of where the developing flower heads are, there's often a bright orange little oval poking out from the side of the plant, which is brilliant. And also the green veined white and large white will use this plant as a larval food 
uh, plant as well. And the small white, I believe, I've not seen small white caterpillars on there, but I, I assume and I've read that apparently the small white does as well. So a larval food plant for at least four butterfly species, as well as all the nectar and pollen that it provides for many other insects. And it is absolutely great it's better in a semi shady position and I should say guys with all these plants if you can get them in a little bit of sun or at least allow them to have sun for a little part of the day they will do better of course but generally speaking garlic mustard is a great tolerant plant for shade it's really really good because it will grow under a hedge and its other name is obviously jack by the hedge which some of you may know it as and quite often you'll see long long bands of it or blocks of it underneath the bottom of a hedgerow where it obviously gets its more traditional name so a really really fantastic plant and one that i absolutely love i know springs arrive when i see it starting to flower so yes garlic mustard number one get some in your garden so i should just say as well guys obviously if you're in the uk and you're looking to buy any of the plants that i mentioned today then do check out the wildyourgarden.com online shop link in the description below where obviously we are very happy to be able to ship you most of these plants that I'm talking about today. So do check out the wildyourgarden.com online shop, whole new website coming very soon. So stay tuned to the channel for that one. But yes, thank you to you all indeed who support the channel and indeed the online shop. It is growing uh, very quickly and it's great to see so many of you ordering the pond liners. And I should say as well, a bit of an update on the pond plants guys we will have those coming back into stock by the end of may if not sooner hopefully so for those of you that are waiting for your pond plants to plant your pond hats off to you for being so patient but it has been obviously unseasonably cold for march and april so things have taken a lot longer to progress within a pond setting so they are nearly ready so just a couple more weeks guys and we will have all the pond plants available for you soon update video when they are available coming up on the channel so don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell then you won't miss a single video that i post twice a week wednesday and a sunday 6 p.m bst yes stay tuned lots more info to come so number two and one of my all-time favorite spring flowers that is first to emerge if you like of the spring plants um, and that is the primrose now primroses are a wonderful plant and they are great because they flower so early sometimes even as early as february and i've even seen them on the odd occasion flowering in december and january but generally speaking they'll be out in early march and they are a great source of nectar for a lot of insects in particular very early emerging insects things such as our brimstone butterflies that are coming out from hibernation and while we're on brimstones i might as well mention that in the front garden i have over the last few days counted no less than 56 eggs of the brimstone in the front older buckthorn hedge that i planted specifically for this butterfly so i don't know if i said butterfly then butterfly anyway <laughs> um yes specifically planted for this butterfly so absolutely chuffed to bits that that's already laden with eggs which will hopefully turn into caterpillars in the next few weeks and i'll keep you guys updated obviously the front garden more videos on that to come go onto the home page click on the playlist and go to my garden lots of videos on this back garden where i am at the moment and the front wildlife garden that i've created over the last few weeks so yes more updates to come on that but the brimstone obviously a very welcome guest in the garden indeed but yes they do visit the primstone primstone <laughs> primrose flowers as an early nectar source they have a long proboscis or tongue if you like so they can get deep into these flowers which is absolutely brilliant to see along with the bee flies which are one of my favorite early emerging insects which i do have in the uh, in the garden we have a dark edged bee fly here and it's great to see those using the source of nectar available from these plants so there's many insects indeed that will use primrose and primrose really will grow in some quite deep shady conditions so a really good plant for the back of a border under a tree under a hedgerow i mean even under the holly that i've got down here i will be planting some in the fullness of time because it's such a great plant and um, along with many many of these plants that i'm talking about they're designed to flower early before a lot of the trees leaf over so primrose an absolutely essential plant for your garden in terms of attracting wildlife it's also a larval food plant for a few moth species as well so a really really good plant for a shady part of your garden so i should also say as well guys that all of these plants we are talking about today are 
they're basically herbaceous perennials. They are not bulbs. So I've already done videos on the best five plants you can plant in your garden, spring bulbs if we like. Um, so I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one because I've already covered things such as the bluebell, the wood anemone, lesser celandine, which are great plants for shade, but I'm not going to cover those in this video today. I'm talking about herbaceous perennials and that's a plant that comes back year after year or it's an annual or it's well the perennial obviously means every year so um, yes either the herbaceous perennials some of them are biennial that i'm talking about today that i've already discussed which is obviously where they establish in the first year flower in the second then die but a herbaceous perennial generally speaking is a plant that comes back year after year for two three five seven ten years depends on the plant so yes most of them are we're going to be talking about today are the herbaceous perennials not the bulbs check that video out Yes, let's get on with the next choice. So number three, the cowslip. I couldn't really have a spring list of plants if you like. Well, these aren't all spring plants, but of course they are plants that are designed to flower before the leaves of the trees shade over in a more wooded setting. So that's how they're developed over the millennia. But number three is the cowslip because it's just an absolutely gorgeous sight especially when you see them quite often uh, along kind of road embankments or, or verges if you like where because they're on a slope quite often the seeds will sort of tumble down the slope that's where you get these big drifts of these pale yellow flowers come early April which I just love to see they are absolutely brilliant and they are used by a lot of insects um, I was very fortunate enough to in the some of the cowslips that I've got in this border behind me uh, a couple of weeks ago film a hairy footed flower bee female um, gathering pollen for her nest hole in the bee hotel in the front garden which was absolutely delightful to see so it's again a great example of providing everything within your garden to create a home for these insects not just a pit stop not just somewhere to come and have come and have a pint before they go off back home this is somewhere where they can basically come they can use all the flowers on offer to either nectar on to then gather pollen and what she was doing is gathering pollen um, with her with her tongue so she was holding on to the cowslip flower i'll put a clip in of the slow-mo i got out of, of it uh, more look than anything but she was uh, gathering that uh, pollen putting it on her front legs rubbing it on her hind legs where she's got the pollen sacs which are these sort of bright yellow and orange sacs of pollen it's absolutely gorgeous to see and before she then transported that off to the front garden to insert into the little nest chamber where she's laid an egg uh, then she'll bung it up with pollen which is food for the the larvae of these bees before then sealing that all off and i was very fortunate enough to find uh, not a hairy footed flower bee but a red mason bee sealing off one of the canes in the bug hotel yesterday so absolutely chuffed to see that so yes just one of the many many insects that will use cowslips and again another great um, source for many moth species as well so cowslips are really really good and they just look amazing don't they they are absolutely fantastic uh, they are obviously part of the primula family so you may be more familiar with the more traditional gardens out there you may be more familiar with some of your primula auriculas and some of the more garden uh, derivatives of this english native wildflower so i just love to see it and again does very well in a very shady setting so underneath bushes trees if you've got a really shady area bung some cowslips they will absolutely love it so cowslip number three another great source of wildflower for attracting many many wild forms of wildlife to your garden so number four red campion now red campion is i'm going to say it, it's my favorite plant for a shady border it's absolutely brilliant and at this time of year early may when it's now starting to come out it is just a sea of pink quite why it's called red campion i'm not sure a lot of people know it as pink campion which is more apt for the color of it but i just love this plant it's one that i've put in my woodland border over there that i'll put a link to at the end of this one uh, the woodland border i've just finished a video of and released it if you haven't seen it do check that out i created a mini woodland border with many of the species we're talking about here today within about six square meters and it really is a little shady patch and it's just behind the camera over there so i'll put a link to that video at the end of this one do check it out it's got lots of information on how i created a, a woodland border and that's from the trees 
down to the shrubs and down to the wildflowers I've planted underneath. So a brilliant little thing that you can do within a very small space. But yes, the red campion, absolutely wonderful. It'll grow almost anywhere, lots of different soil types. It'll grow on heavy clay as well. So a really good one for a wet area. And it's very, very good in terms of attracting lots of butterflies in particular to your garden. The list I've seen nectaring on this plant in springtime is almost endless. A lot of the whites will use it, the orange chip, the brimstone. Uh, there's many, many species to name, but it is a really, really good plant for bees as well. So, and the thing I love about it is it's an absolute profusion of flowers. It's not just like a few sort of hanging heads uh, on a cowslip, for example. I know it's a lot smaller in terms of a flower, the cowslip, but it really does add some height to a border, the back of a border, so it would go great. And I have planted some uh, this year behind me in this border, and I've just finished this border, I should say, guys, um, yesterday. So I will be doing a full video on this herbaceous border, which is kind of a semi-shady herbaceous border a few more of the non-native perennials in but i'll explain exactly how and why i've planted that in another video to come so stay tuned for that one but i have planted some red campion in here which will do very well towards the back of the border as i say and it'll just come up and kind of lean towards the light with these gorgeous gorgeous pink flowers and you can get white campion as well it's another different species and sometimes the pink does have a lovely variation in its color sometimes it's almost cerise pink and sometimes it's more of a kind of a washed out pale pink so a really really lovely plant with a bit of diversity within it but a great great plant for any border setting whether it's um, and that's what i should say as well guys is all of these plants will actually grow in full sun it's not like they're going to just say you know oh no stick me in the back of a border i don't want any sunlight of course they're going to want some sunlight so if you can give them a little bit that's great but they will obviously go in a full sun setting i've planted them um, many a time in a full sun south facing border red camping it'll do fine it's absolutely brilliant very very diverse in terms of where it'll grow how it'll grow and it surely won't let you down in terms of attracting lots of wildlife to your own garden and what i love as well about this plant as if i couldn't love it anymore is when it goes to seed it has these almost little sort of brown cauldrons if you like uh, which which hold these lovely little gorgeous dark gray black seeds uh, like poppy seeds a little bit and if you, you you can see them actually almost full to the brim when they're upright like that and if you just hold out your hand and turn them upside down you'll get this profusion of seeds falling out into your hand and i just love it it's the best and cheapest way that you can add wildflowers to your own garden by using nature's natural source of seed that it's providing to reproduce and quite often you can just get gather those seeds and throw them in your borders as soon as you find them and they will germinate throughout the course of the summer and into the autumn and you'll start to see tiny little miniature versions of the plant you've just harvested the seed from so yes red campion it grows almost anywhere brilliant plant for shade and one that will certainly bring you lots more wildlife into your own garden so number five and as we are now soon approaching the rhs chelsea flower show no doubt many a garden will be featuring this next plant which is of course the foxglove now many 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 varieties of foxgloves have been produced um, and developed over the few, last few decades to create derivatives of our original native foxglove now i think personally you can't beat the original and the native it's just fantastic although i must admit i did the other day by a few of the perennial ones now i should say as well that the foxglove is biennial so if you notice them one year but not the next then don't panic they will have dropped seeds so just like the garlic mustard they will they will uh, form their basil rosettes in the first year then they will send up the flower spike seed and then die and that's it in the second year so what you have to do with foxgloves is plant them year after year because they will then obviously continue through your garden every year so uh, just for this first two or three years then you should find you'll, you'll have to plant them then you should find the seed will naturally develop around the garden and you will then have them back year after year but foxgloves are absolutely brilliant and as i was about to say i did buy a few perennials the other day to put in the front garden and i just heard a swift that's yes you probably can't hear that but there's a few screeching swifts overhead i thought i heard them yesterday evening for the first time so yes very chuffed to hear those at last over my garden here what an absolute treat anyway sorry 
back to the perennial foxgloves yes you can get now perennial foxgloves which i think is great and i did um crumble the other day and i bought some perennial ones to put in the front garden which i can't wait to flower some of these are a lovely kind of um they're not peach they're like a rusty brown peachy color sounds awful but <laughs> they're really really gorgeous apricot that's the word i'm kind of looking for um so yes i can't wait to see how they develop in the front garden along with many other species of foxgloves that i've put in a mixture of the perennials um and the natives as well along around my uh, herbaceous borders and around the bottom of my hedgerow in the front garden full video on my uh, may tour to come on the front garden as i say but yes foxgloves absolutely loved by bees if you haven't seen them before i love the way bumblebees in particular will crawl right into the middle of a flower and then reverse out and fly around to the next flower it's absolutely magical to see and foxgloves will do well in a sunny setting as well um, but they will go very well in shade and quite honestly seeing a grove of foxgloves is just a pure delight so i'd strongly recommend you getting some in your own garden and they will not let you down in terms of how many bees in particular they will attract to your border so number six last but by no means least is one of my favorite plants for a herbaceous border and that is honesty now this again is another biennial and you may be crying out saying yes but joel it's a garden escapee it's not native i know <laughs> but i absolutely love it i think it's absolutely brilliant and it's so good for wildlife i cannot tell you it attracts so many bees butterflies my favorite the orange tip slight bias but it does attract that to um, nectar from it as well as act as a larval food plant so uh, although I'm kind of questionable as to or I question um, how much viability there is in the larvae eating the seed pods and surviving in so in, so in terms of the mortality rate compared to the garlic mustard but anyway story for another day uh, but yes I have seen the orange tip lay eggs on the honesty as well as use it as a nectar plant so it's a really really great plant it'll go, go well in shady settings for sure and it's absolutely gorgeous the flowers of this are just like perfect they are the most gorgeous pinky purple you could ever see they are probably the one of the most photogenic plants i think you could have in a border and they have these gorgeous seed pods when they develop you'll probably remember them as a kid they're a bit of a nostalgic plant for me um, when you you see the lovely kind of um, silvery papery uh, seed heads they're like a, a, an oval with usually with four seeds individual seeds within them and they have kind of two layers if you peel the outside layers back you'll find the seeds stuck to an in, internal kind of film absolutely brilliant i love seeing them when they are past their best and they're obviously just you know looking a little bit worse for wear but the seed seed heads in the winter time never cease to add a bit of structure and some beautiful to look at in the winter months so i love it it is it is a biennial so it will obviously take the first year to establish as a basal floret uh, before it then sends up a flower spike in the second year and then dies i have got some i'm trying to get back established into the garden i've planted some in the front garden i've got one down here somewhere who uh, is not doing very well because the snails have found it sadly snails love honesty is the only downside but uh they're welcome to it it's a wildlife garden i don't deter them so yes i shall just plant some more <laughs> but honestly really good and again the seed pods if you keep the seeds and scatter them anywhere they'll grow like cress they're brilliant just throw them at the back of your border and within a year's time you'll start to see the leaves developing and you're just completely forgotten you've done it but it really is um, a, an easy way of spreading this plant just like the red campion as i say so a fantastic and the foxglove i know said spoke about it a moment ago but the foxglove a great thing about the foxglove as well is if you get like a little ice cream tub or a sandwich tub or something like that hold it at the base of the flower stem when the flowers have turned into seeds and just tap the stem you'll get hundreds and hundreds of seeds falling out of the foxglove stem so again a really brilliant resource and it does grow very well from uh, seed again so the foxglove the honesty the garlic mustard i can assure you as well <laughs> does grow very well from seed this ground has been run on and trampled by the dogs until i put the dog proof fencing in um, earlier on in this year and uh, now it's just a sea of, of garlic mustard so they do very well with a bit of st disturbance and they can last obviously a while in the ground as with many seeds before they germinate but most of these plants as i say the garlic mustard the foxglove the red campion and the honesty will go 
very, very well from seeds. So use that natural resource, guys. It's a really, really good way. And obviously, if you want to grow from seed, then check out the Wild Your Garden online shop. Um, if you don't want to buy the plants themselves, or if you don't have the budget for buying the plants and you want to grow lots, obviously a, a cheap and effective way to do that is to buy the seed from the online shop and give it a go yourself. These are all very easy plants to grow as I say but yes the honesty is just an absolute favorite of mine it spruces up any border and just looks fabulous and is a great source of food for many many forms of wildlife so I would highly recommend you get some in your own garden so that sums up some of my favorite plants for a shady border guys obviously excluding the bulbs as I said at the beginning of this video so let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've got some of these plants in your own garden, what your experiences have been, what you've seen on them. And obviously, as always, guys, thank you so much for the support. Stay tuned, hit that subscribe button because I've got tons more lined up for you guys over the coming weeks. So yes, a big thank you to you all. I am absolutely thrilled to be able to bring you these videos from my now slightly more tamed wildlife garden. And yes, stick around, lots more to come from the channel. So. Hope you're all well guys, stay wild. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you all very soon. Mm -hmm.